AVV Nation, all of YouTube, what's going on? It's Patrick with VectorVest, back with you once again after a little bit of a long break. And today we're back with you, bringing you another part to our technical analysis series. Now, this indicator that we're gonna look at here today is extremely special to me because it's one of the first indicators I was taught back at a young age of four years old from my father. So I'm excited to bring this one to you guys and hopefully you guys are excited as well. So if you're ready to see what indicator it is that I'm talking about, make sure as always smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscribed, all of that helps us out with the YouTube algorithms and doesn't cost you a thing. And without further ado, let's jump right into it here today. All right, welcome back everybody. So before we get into today's topic, we're gonna to talk about a little background information about myself. So for anybody that's not familiar with me, I've been investing since I was about the age of four years old, and I picked it up from my father who's been managing and been an individual trader, a retail trader, ever since I've been born. So the very first indicator he taught me about was the relative strength index. And it started because he used to look at chart after chart after chart of all these different stocks, and the RSI was one of his personal favorites back in the day. So the reason why I started off with this is because we're gonna talk about RSI from the traditional standpoint of looking at it from an overbought and oversold, ter or oversold basis. But I'm also gonna give you guys a little bit of an extended use of RSI and show you a different way to approach RSI to stick into a stock a little bit longer and take advantage of longer uptrends. So if you're ready to learn both of those ways, make sure, as I stated earlier, smash that like button and stick around towards the very end to see the one way that's not really talked about too often, but could greatly increase your performance in your portfolio. So first off, let's start off, what is the RSI or the Relative Strength Index? So the Relative Strength Index is a technical indicator used in momentum trading that measures the speed of the security's recent price changes. If we scroll down just a little bit, RSI was created by Wells Wilder Jr. and he introduced it in 1978. The RSI can do more than point to overbought and oversold securities. It can also indicate securities that may be primed for a trend reversal or corrective pullback in price. So talking about those divergences like we've mentioned previously in other technical indicator videos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the table of contents over here on the left-hand side and get really to the main, um, main meat and potatoes as my colleague Glenn Tompkins would refer it to. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and start with talking about overbought and oversold. So generally, when the RSI indicator crosses 30 on the RSI chart, it's a bullish sign, and when it crosses 70, it's a bearish sign. The reason why is because the RSI is cast on a scale of zero to 100. And the level of 30 at the bottom indicates an oversold condition and the level of 70 or above indicates an overbought situation in the stock. And just like we've talked about with other overbought oversold indicators in the past, just because a stock gets into an overbought or oversold condition doesn't mean it's instantly going to reverse and start to head the other way. This is something extremely important to note and remember if you're using the RSI. So while, you know, as it states here, just because it goes above 70, that's considered a bearish sign. Realistically, just because it hits that 70 level or above isn't really the bearish sign that you're looking for as a trader. It's more of when it starts to come back out of that overbought or oversold territory or when it starts to come back down and crosses below that level of 70. That's when you're starting to notice that the stock is now starting to reverse course and move lower. So keep that in mind when using the RSI. Once again, just to clarify, just because it's overbought and oversold or oversold doesn't mean you should instantly go buy or sell that stock. Wait for the confirmation that it's coming back the other way before using it as a guide to start jumping on board. So really, that's the main thing that it talks about. You do have the RSI divergences, which we'll briefly point out here, and I'll use the chart to demonstrate it. Just like with any divergence, if the price is moving in one direction and the indicator is moving in another direction, that indicates a potential reversal coming. And then what you wait to look for is either a positive reversal sign from the candlestick patterns 
Or once again, with this picture here, the RSI coming out of that oversold condition and starting to move higher. So now that we have a good idea of the traditional sense of RSI showing overbought and oversold conditions, once again, above 70 being overbought, below 30 being oversold, let's jump into the VectorVest software and take a look. And so we'll get out of here. And starting off in the Unisearch tool, the VectorVest 7 software, we have the ProTrader folder, which once again is an add-on feature to the VectorVest 7 software that allows you to do technical scans. So if you're interested in utilizing the ProTrader, give our support a call or click on the link down in the description below, sign up for the two-week free trial, put it to the test and see if it's right for you. So we'll come down here and we'll come down to the RSI searches. So we have an RSI crossing above 30, and we have an RSI crossing below 70. The other two are custom searches that I built, which we'll discuss here in a little bit. So for now, let's talk about stocks that are moving higher. We'll use that as our example for the day. So therefore, we're looking for stocks that are crossing above 30. So we click on the search, take a look at it. We see the stock price split adjusted RSI of nine. So that's the nine periods or nine candles that it's looking at to come up with the indicator has crossed above 30 in the past one day. Now, as always with this series, I'm not gonna get into how the formula is created or how the calculations are created. If you wanna get into that, by all means, you can definitely do so. You can use Investopedia. They have a great resource there for you. But you know, with VectorVest and everything that we do here, we wanna keep it simple. It's just like driving a car. You don't know how every single part of the car works to be able to drive it. But as you can see, when you go out to work every day, People are still driving cars even without knowing exactly how every single piece is working together. And that's how we like to do it here at VectorVest. As long as we understand how this works, we don't need to understand all the fine details in the background of how it's calculated. So getting into it, we have a nine period RSI is crossed above 30 in the past one day. If you click upon that, you can change the RSI to two, four, nine, 14, 20, or 25. We'll stick with a 14 here today. It's one of my favorite versions of the RSI. And then once again, crossing or is currently or has been above the 30 level in the past one day. So as of today, they're breaking above that level of 30. So we go ahead and say, okay, look at the other criteria. Stock has to be greater than a dollar, average volume greater than 100,000, no pink sheets or penny stocks and no contra ETFs and the sort VST descending. You could play around with this sort to fit your specific needs, but we're just gonna go with the default VST sort for today. So now we'll go ahead and run the search. And we get a long list here. As you can see, I have the top 25, but we could probably get more if we expanded that out. But today we'll just keep the top 25 for now. And then I'll go ahead and click on the graph all button at the top. And so starting off here with our very first stock, AMPH. As you can see, it's been steadily falling after that nice long run that we saw throughout most of 2021 coming into 2022. And since that point, we've hit a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. You can see RSI hit that overbought territory towards that peak and then started moving lower. And every time we started moving lower and hit a lower high, RSI also hit a lower high confirming that. Now, RSI is typically looked at as a great tool in range bound stocks. But the second tip that we're going to look at here, the second way we're going to look at this here a little bit later, it's going to look better for more trending markets. So the traditional sense RSI is great for range bound and the advanced level that we're going to look at here in a little bit is better for trending. So looking at it here, this stock, yes, it's been moving lower, but it's been moving lower in a steady range. What I mean by that is it's consistent pattern of lower highs and lower lows. And RSI is confirming that. So if we look back, I'll just use the crosshair cursor here. We look back the last time RSI broke below that level 30, it quickly reversed and started moving higher. You had a bullish engulfing pattern shown here. Stock ran up. RSI got close to that level of overbought, but then started moving lower very quickly. Then now for the second time in the course of the year, RSI in the stock has hit that oversold condition below that level of 30. Now you notice this time around, it didn't just quickly reverse and start to move higher. It hit that level, stayed there for a few days and now starting to move higher. 
So looking at it, we have a big bullish candle, uh, big green update here today on this one. So this would be a good candidate to consider as long as we have follow through the next day. And once again, as always, with anything VectorVest related, we have the market moving in our favor. That's the benefit of utilizing VectorVest is we can tell you when to use these bullish searches or when to use bearish searches based off the market timing. So that way you can profit no matter what the market is doing. So if we move down to the next one, HSII. Now this one has been in a steady decline for quite some time. And if we put on our level of oversold or that level of 30 here, we can see using the crosshair cursor, hit here, got a little bit of a rebound here, slight rebound, little choppiness here. You got a rebound when you kiss that level of 30, once again here and here. So while this stock is in a steady decline, you do have these short-term trade opportunities when it hits that oversold territory for a rebound. So if you're more of an aggressive trader looking to make a quick buck on a few days time frame, this could be a great one to consider, you know, just taking advantage of these quick little pops. But once again, adjust your trading plan accordingly. You're not trying to shoot for the 100% wins. You're shooting for, you know, scalping the 5, 10% maybe, and then taking your profit and then moving on to something else. But as a pro tip, we prefer to look for stocks that are rising from bottom left to upper right and not upper left to bottom right. DORM, we put on that level of 30 here at the bottom. And looking at it, last time it hit that oversold territory, it was right here. Stock moved sideways a little bit. You saw that bullish divergence that we were talking about where price was moving sideways, but actually the RSI was moving higher, indicating that downward momentum that we'd been in was dissipating and a new uptrend may be starting to form. Now, stock has had a steady decline here, a sharp decline. And then we're just now coming out of that oversold territory. Looks like we're trying to rebound a little bit. Would like to see a little bit more follow through and hold above that level 30 by the end of the day to get more confirmation and feel a little bit better about it as well. And then last but not least, we'll look at one more, and that is PWZ, and we'll go ahead and actually use the horizontal cursor for this to make it a little easier. And we can see, this is a perfect example of why you don't buy a stock just because it hits that oversold condition. If you look at that level of 30 here, we stayed in that oversold condition from realistically the beginning of January all the way until about the middle or right before the uh, beginning of June. So we were in oversold territory for quite some time. So this is why you wait for it, not just to get to oversold conditions, but for the confirmation that it's coming out of those oversold conditions. So once again, wait for it to really break out and get followed through the next day that it, once it gets above that level of 30, and that would be your confirmation to step into the trade. All right, so now that we've talked about that, Let's talk about another way of looking at RSI or one that's not really talked about too often. This is kind of a trade secret. So you guys are getting the inside scoop here today. And so we talked about the level of 30. We talked about level of 70 showing overbought, oversold conditions. But what about in a trending market, a nice steady trending market like we saw up until really the end of 2021? Well, there's another way to analyze RSI that can help you avoid the confusion, help you avoid the news and focus on the longer trend of the stock. Now, if we get out of here, go back into the VectorVest software. You saw the RSI crossing above that level of 50. So let's go ahead. We'll just say no to this. Go ahead and run the level 50. And I'll go ahead and graph all of these, put them on, and I'll just use a horizontal line and put it right at that level of 50. And so the trick with the RSI 50 is when you're looking at it, is once it crosses above that level of 50, that's your entry. Once it crosses below that level of 50, that's your exit. The theory behind this is once it crosses above that middle territory and you're in a trending market, so typically the stocks are in a nice uptrend to begin with, 
the stock is creating a new uptrend overall because it's in that upper portion of the range that it can be in. And now, even though it hits that overbought territory, it pulls back slightly, but then it continues to move higher. Just like we saw with, once again, the 2020 rally that we saw since the uh, the beginning of May or beginning of April till really the end of 2021 and even previous times. So when using this, it is better to use this in a trending market rather than a range bound market, but it helps you cut out the noise. So when you have the market running and you have these short little pullbacks of, you know, five, 10% that could potentially stop you out and also make you miss a bigger gain. This will help remove that noise and focus on the longer term trend. So here, looking at uh, VET, the stock crossed above the level of 50 when it was trading at 1016, hit a high of 2350 roughly, and then eventually got stopped out, never got followed through that day, so we won't count that, but then eventually got stopped out here at 20, 2008. So you've almost doubled your money just by following that and avoided these little whipsaws that could have stopped you out throughout this uptrend and helped you capture the most potential gain. Now, it didn't capture the maximum, but we're not here to try to pinpoint the exact bottoms, exact tops, because nobody can do that. Be completely honest. Anybody tells you they can, my best advice to you is turn around and run away the opposite direction as fast as you can. But looking at it, here, you had another run. Stock crossed above that level of 50 when it was trading at 20, broke down here when it was trading at 25. Well, another 25% gain in a very short period of time. Not bad, especially given the market conditions. We go to the next stock, put our level of 50 on once again. Use our crosshair cursor. This one a little bit choppier, but still same situation. Here you crossed above that level 50, pulled back, but really never got follow through. So crossed above the level 50 when it was trading at 408. Then it ran up, gapped up even, came back down. Here you did get some follow through, 440. 10%, all right, we'll take that. Another opportunity here, 446. Stock gap down, 469. Well, made three bucks. Rather take a small win than let it end up turning into a loss. Taking a look at the most recent run, 489. Broke down here at 529. Not a bad trade. And once again, helping you avoid some of these whipsaws that can really play on traders' emotions or investors' emotions and make you second guess yourself and end up making the wrong decision. So that's why RSI 50 is a well-known secret in the trading community that hopefully you guys can benefit from going forward. But once again, the overbought, oversold, traditional sense of RSI is great for uh, more range-bound markets. This advanced level or the 50 level of RSI is more for a trending market. So hopefully those pro tips help you guys out going forward. And let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Once again, it's been my pleasure being with you guys here today. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a great rest of your trading day. And until next time, take care. Adios and toodles.